All right, giving it a few minutes to actually start the stream. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Actually, hello, hello, hello. It's good afternoon. This is Developing with Cockroach DB, um, which is a stream that'll happen twice a week. Every Wednesday at 12 o'clock Eastern time, we are going to come to you with a module about developing on Cockroach DB. And every Thursday we'll have office hours at same time, same bat channel. Um, this is a developer focused success program with a series of workshops and office hours to help you tackle your biggest developer aspirations. And, and yeah, make sure that you're getting the most out of your Cockroach DB experience. Um, we're assuming that you have SQL and, and maybe Postgres experience. Um, and if you're, if you've taken Cockroach university classes, if you're new to intermediate user of Cockroach cloud, we would love to help you on your journey. Um, make the most of the platform and help us improve your experience. Um, let me be clear, by the way, besides introducing my name, um, that'll come in a minute, that this is not the only resource. We have uh, several other resources for you. We have community Slack. We've got a forum. We're going to have all those links available. Uh, below, I believe for live, I've completely forgot to set up those links in the caption. Also, in case you haven't noticed, today is our very first day. <laughs> but first, I would like to get to the format. Um, really, this is why we're here. This is what the live stream is today. Um, we are here to help you be successful. So let us know what you're making. We want to help you make it. Um, tell us what your aspirations are. And and yeah, today we're going to have a kind of high level architecture overview because understanding how the bits and pieces work underneath the hood um, helps you use CockroachDB more efficiently. And, um, and then later on, we're going to have a lab where we are going to get started and we are going to spin up a cluster Theoretically, faster than you can cook a bowl of ramen. Fabio, show me that next slide, because I think we're going to talk about. It is. Agenda is exactly the same. There we go. Nope. Agenda is exactly the same as the why we're here. So that's good to know. We're learning today along with you. Uh, let me introduce myself and our two experts today. I am your host, Rain Leander. I am the developer advocate here at... <laughs> Hi, Adrian. I am the developer advocate, one of several developer advocates here at Cockroach Labs. And with me today, I have uh, Matt Vardy, who is with Technical Support. Uh, Matt, why don't you tell me your title and uh, what you're playing with today? Hey, uh, like Rain said, my name's Matt. Uh, I'm a technical support engineer in our escalations department. Um, I help work on process. I work on our systems and tools, and I work on our tricky customer issues. Today, uh, we'll be going over a brief lab on how to get started with Cockroach Cloud Free Tier. Awesome. And Fabio... Fabio, I'm going to kill your last name. You pronounce it so I can hear all the fabulousness. Ghirardello? Yes, it's Fabio Ghirardello. I'm a, I am an enterprise architect. I've been for Cockroach for uh, over a year, and I work with my customers to bring a Cockroach to be into production. Awesome. Uh, so, so this was kind of born out of um, these, these modules that we're going to be doing over the next few weeks. Uh, they were born out of these modules that we do for um, on-prem or enterprise-level customers as a re regular resource. Fabio will go to a customer's uh, office and do this training, um, and and we have other experts that are going to come on and do that, do those modules. That literally, we thought, you know what? Why don't we do these live and actually put them out there so that everyone can learn this stuff 
And, and then after we do the stream, even if you miss the stream, we are going to leave the stream today, the module and the office hours tomorrow will be online as a resource forever and ever. So don't mess up. <laughs> no pressure. So today I am also the student as well as the host. And when Matt or whoever else is doing the lab for the week um, starts to teach us something new, I will be doing it live, no pressure. And um, if I mess up, I can ask Matt questions right away. But if you also want to follow along and do it live, we would love to have you. So please comment if you're interested in coming on here as a student during the lab and if you have any questions at all during the entire stream just go ahead and comment wherever you're watching this we've got twitch we've got youtube we've got twitter we've got we're all over the place you're fine all right so i'm going to hand it over to fabio for an overview of architecture followed by a getting started lab by matt fabio take it away Thank you, Rain. Thank you. Yes, as a first, uh, you know, this is our first session, uh, uh, the developer uh, streaming. Uh, uh, we thought it would be great to start with uh, an architecture and an overview of the architecture of CockroachDB. Uh, and that's important uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a base uh, for future, for all the future workshops. So today we have a, a set of learning objectives. The first thing that will be, again, uh, understanding, learning about CockroachDB, unique scalability and, and the resilience. Uh, this is very important because uh, what we want to do with CockroachDB is uh, being able to develop a truly global application. So and to understand, uh, you want to understand how to design your application uh, uh, that leveraging the, the characteristic of CockroachDB. Uh, so it's important to understand how CockroachDB works under the hood uh, to be able to, to leverage those characteristics. So, and uh, within uh, one of the other objectives, uh, also we want to make sure that you are familiar, we are comfortable in navigating through our documentation. We have, have an excellent documentation. There's a lot of uh, example, sample codes, and we're going to go through one of that particularly when we talk about uh, transaction retries uh, and see how easy it is to navigate it and go through that. Uh, it's very easy. Um, and finally, again, we conclude Matt is going to give us a quick overview on Cockroach Cloud, how to get started, how to get set up and up and running with, really within minutes. So with that, uh, I think we can start our, our quick presentation. We'll take about 20 minutes, probably something like 10, 15 slides. Uh, again, it's an overview, it's not a NIM depth. If you think you're going to require a NIM depth, we, we can discuss tomorrow. We have the office hours. We, go, we can go a uh, depth. Uh, uh, for as long as you want. So cockroach architecture. So let's uh, start first, uh, however, discussing a bit what is Cockroach Cloud. So CockroachDB is uh, the uh, database, is uh, the, the product. Cockroach Cloud is our uh, database uh, as a service offering, uh, is our DBAAS. So, and that is a service that allows you to save a time, uh, uh, infrastructure, allows you the same, um, maintenance uh, uh, because it allows you to code more uh, it allows you to uh, go straight uh, into uh, writing your application and not worrying about all the maintenance and operation of managing uh, a database class so we uh, uh, can deploy cockroach cloud cockroach database on top of aws on google soon asia is going to come to and the great feature of a manager service uh, is still hold true. So you will take care of hardware procurement. We'll pro provide the hardware infrastructure uh, through the public cloud, the software in terms of uh, OS upgrades, OS patch and security, software upgrades. So we upgrade for you uh, for you on your behalf, uh, CockroachDB to the very latest version, to the very latest patch, uh, security patches. We take care also of backups of your backups of all your data, and as well as all other security security related, uh, think of uh, SOC 2 type 2 type of compliant for uh, the security of your data. So that's a uh, uh, cockroach cloud uh, and uh, a great value comes from this quote from, our, from one of our customers. Really, uh, it's very easy to replicate our service in lots of regions, but persisting data and making it act as a single unified system 
that that's a challenge that's very difficult indeed but cockroach db essentially solves that problem and that really is in a nutshell what really cockroach cloud and cockroach db is about so it's which, a unique logical which display. customer said this do we are we allowed to say <laughs> like which cockroach pod customer said it or was it an anonymous? I don't survey? think uh, that we got to see the data. So we, we mentioned it's a Cockroach Cloud customer. I'm not sure about the detail of the Which I don't think we are allowed to, to share that. Uh, oh, that we okay. haven't asked for the permission, but we can share the quote that this is basically a reorganized sentence of we, their do, thought. we do have a lot of customers, by the way, who um, either haven't given permission for their name or their logo or, or whatnot. But sometimes we get awesome quotes like this one. Um, and I'm always curious about whether or not we we are allowed to quote their name or not. Uh, it's fascinating. I come from an open source background, so I'm always like, wait, but who is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, these are the, yeah, very, uh, but this is really, you, it's basically uh, summarizes very well what we discuss in the next few slides. It's, uh, so about the architecture that, that's basically what it is. Couch DB is a database for persisting data in a transactional manner, in a consistent manner. And despite being a cluster of nodes, acts as a, a lo logical database, as a unique logical database, as a, as a unified system. So let's start with a few uh, key architecture topics. So the, uh, starting with the overview. So CockroachDB uh, is a dynamically distributed, is a transactional key value database management system with a SQL interface. And the SQL interface is Postgres compatible. So we leverage the SQL ANSI, the ANSI SQL syntax of, uh, uh, of Postgres and implementing inside the CockroachDB. So you, as a developer, when you get to uh, work with CockroachDB, you will, uh, it will look to you very familiar if you're familiar with Postgres. So we, by borrowing their uh, Postgres wire protocol, we made it very accessible for developers to get started. You don't need to learn any new language. It's going to be very, very familiar to you if you're familiar with SQL, if you're familiar with Postgres in particular. CockroachDB is implemented as a cluster of nodes. So you see in this, uh, in this, uh, in this example here, I have three nodes. And uh, in each node is equal in its function to any other in a shared nothing architecture. Each node is an independent process that holds uh, the database logic and a portion of the data. And it's also location aware. It knows it's part of a larger cluster and it knows how to communicate with all its peers. That's cool. So CockroachDB is not a master server or primary secondary type of architecture. It's not doesn't have the notion of a gateway node, of a primary node, or a master node, or executor node. Every node is exactly the same as all the other. All are gateway nodes, all are primary, all are master, all are secondary at the very same time. So it's a shared nothing architecture. It's what, distributed. What if they get hmm? into a fight, like like? How do you like what if there's conflict or a write between two nodes that conflicts with another node? How do they decide who wins? Uh, yeah, that's a very interesting question. We're going to go through that because that's the number one Link. question that we're going to go through that when we discuss about raft and raft, raft protocol and the concept of the leaseholder. But cool. it's too soon to that. First, we need to introduce a few other key concepts in the in the cockroach DB architecture and then. Cool. It, Trust me, it will all come clear, Rain. You will see how all the pieces fit together to create a system that is, uh, again, CockroachDB is uh, important for its uh, transaction support. So how do transactions actually happen in a distributed database? How do you no don't you run into conflicts? Well, CockroachDB called transactions are distributed and then they're executed with the highest logical isolation level, which is the serializable isolation level. It's the only one we support. And therefore, we can uh, guarantee that all the transactions are acid. The database uh, also can be geopartitioned across regions and zones, uh, and that avoid creating uh, duplicate databases across, across uh, the globe. So in the parlance of um, the CAP theorem, CockroachDB is a strict CP system. So we will always favor consistency over availability. That said, we are also a highly available system in that if one of those three nodes goes down, 
uh, the data that that, that node will has uh, can be served by any of the other two remaining nodes so we are operationally operational we are highly available again and that ties back with the the concept of resiliency and hence the name cockroach cockroach is a very 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 resilient animal they've been there before the the dawn of the dinosaurs they sur they survived the, the the ice age they're still here with us uh, they can survive pretty much anything you can kill a cockroach but you cannot co kill a cockroach colon you cannot kill a cluster similar with the cockroach db you can kill a node but you cannot kill the cluster it's not mm -hmm. easy to survive region failures zone failures node failures you name it you can configure it accordingly and fabio we have a question from the audience um please is there Shout out to Kirobo, Tess Faye, maybe. Um, is there a way to achieve encryption at rest without the enterprise feature? I think the answer is no, but... So that, that okay, that we go into a bit of a peculiar question. But yes, uh, it's uh, depending on what you mean by encryption at rest, if you want it to be done by CockroachDB. If what you're looking for is CockroachDB to encrypt your data, no, you cannot do it unless you have an enterprise license. That Got doesn't it. mean that your data sits unencrypted. If you're okay. using like a public cloud like AWS, Google, they all by default encrypt their, their disk. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, so the data Good is never, know. yeah. And uh, I don't think you need uh, uh, for encryption at, uh, in on transit. I don't think you need an enterprise license that will depend right. on how you create your cluster. If you secure the communication between the various nodes through SSL or TLS, yeah. then your data is both encrypted in transit as well as at rest without an enterprise license. So, cool. yep, you can awesome. do that. Okay. So uh, wrapping up here, the key points, uh, those are very important things that explains basically in a nutshell what CockroachDB is and does for you. Again, this is all managed at the database layer, and you don't need to build this capability into your application. So out of the box straight, we have all these features all available, provide you with resiliency, provide you with high availability, provide you with high consistency, transaction support. Uh, you don't have to code it within your application because we don't do eventual consistency. Eventual consistency, cockroach uh, labs, uh, it's a, nobody says it's like a, no one has to say that word. We don't do eventual consistency in rain. We do only strict consistency. That's the only consistency that we make. Right, Matt? Yeah, and, and, and one, yeah, exactly. And one, I mean, all of this stuff comes out of the box, and that's what's so great. Um, dynamically distributed data, your transactions are, are automatically distributed. Uh, geo partitioning and a couple of simple commands, elasticity, and especially resiliency, or no special configurations. So, really minimal changes to your out of the box. Enabled by default. Nice. Right. So, now we're going to go through a few slides uh, here uh, again. This is a bit of a repeat we discussed before. So they, let's dissect a little bit the CockroachDB architecture. I think this is important uh, to understand uh, going through really three slides about the architecture from the bottom up to uh, because it's going to be helpful later when it comes to building application, understanding application, specifically query optimization, performance, uh, partitioning of the data. So we start at the very bottom, the distributor replicated transaction or key value store. So the key value store is a monolithic key space and is ordered by key uh, lexicographically. The store is cut into many ranges. Ranges are then moved based on activity and how you want to pin the data. We're going to go back to the uh, notion of ranges in the next slides. CockroachDB uses uh, the traditional MVCC protocol. So values are always versioned uh, in a, using a hybrid logical uh, clock scheme. That, and we therefore can avoid using atomic clocks, but it is a discussion that uh, we can take uh, uh, later. Values are never updated in place. Values are appended. Uh, we are an append-only database, so we take a snapshot kind of database environment, similar similar to Postgres. Instead, a new version is written which shadows older versions, and in order to delete a value, we append a tombstone to the value. The classical MVCC uh, protocol. So now we have this order monolithic space, which is logical. It's, a, however, physically realized because, of course, it cannot your, your all your data cannot fit inside of a single machine. Uh, 
it's too much data. It's uh, physically realized by dividing this key space into what we call ranges of contiguous key. These are chunks of data uh, of a specific size. The ranges are usually 512 megabytes, configurable. And a range only consumes the space that is using. So ranges start empty, they uh, grow, they split when they grow too large, they merge when they are too small. Um, ranges are then, uh, it's a great size, 512 megabytes, because uh, uh, are small enough to move uh, and split quickly and are large enough to amortize uh, index overhead. So you're inserting a lot of data. These, these ranges, again, are chunks of data that contains uh, your data and usually uh, and the great size is a sweet spot for fund what we find for 512 megabytes is like a sweet spot uh, to store your data for index amortization and splitting the data. Should the node go down, you want to rebalance it to go uh, to other places. So a great, great place to start. Within a range, keys are then ordered by storing them with a per node key value store, which maintains the ordering. Uh, as a key value engine is based out of RocksDB and it's on a proprietary, proprietary is an internal built uh, KV engine called Pebble. Okay. So do we do, do we build Pebble? As we well? build Pebble, yes. Yeah. So it, initially we started with the RocksDB, then we find out that for our, for CockroachDB benefit, uh, it would we would benefit greatly if we have our own specific key value engine. So we tweak it specifically for our use cases and that's, where Pe what, what what Pebble is, so it's highly it's much more efficient than RocksDB. Uh, definitely, we borrowed a lot of the terms, but it's internally supported, fully supported, fully written in Go, as well. Uh, CockroachDB is entirely written in Go, so Pebble, so is Pebble. And here you can see in this slide basically what those ranges look like. It's basically, as I said, a chunk of data that include the entire table of docs. Imagine the table of docs is billions of rows and they don't fit in a single machine. You divide into pieces and these pieces are then spread across the cluster. So here also uh, a little notion about range indexing. To maintain the order in between ranges, a range indexing structure is required. So this is like, a, um, I call it the address book. And every, and this is a system table, every node in your cluster will have this indexing table. So this address book. So every node knows how to locate every single piece of your data inside of your cluster. Imagine that your cluster will have 50, 100 nodes. Every node knows exactly what node holds what data, which makes possible for Cockroach to be the, so that every node is a gateway node. So you don't know, need to know as a developer where you need to, which node you need to go to, to access your data. Every node will be able to serve you your data. That's why we're saying that every node is a gateway node. You connect to any node of your cluster and you just send your query. And the CockroachDB node that receives your query will be responsible for fetching the data, do whatever aggregation you need to do to it, and send it back to you. That relieves an enormous pressure from the application point of view to know where your data is located, to know where your partitions are located, to know where to go to. You just go to any of your node, nice. any of your node in your cluster. I, I noticed, Fabio, that um, uh, that we're talking about dividing the data down into these bite-sized chunks for easy manipulation. What it, how does CockroachDB um, integrate with like the big data use case? Is that possible as well? Is there performance hits or is it just fine? So CockroachDB, you can see, uh, that's a great thing about it is that it scales, not only vertically, yes, you can increase the size of your virtual machines to uh, be more potent, but it also scales horizontally. So yeah. if you notice your workload and it's called horizontally linearly. So if you need to have more throughput uh, or you need to store more data, is as easy as adding more nodes to your cluster. That okay. allows all sorts of use cases around it. The fact that is, uh, the database will always be online when you scale up and down and across allows you for all sorts of things. For once, again, uh, scaling. You need to, um, it's, uh, it's holiday season. You are a retailer. You know you're going to be uh, selling a lot more. You're going gonna, to gonna be busy. Your website is going to be very busy accepting orders for Thanksgiving, uh, Cyber Monday, and, and all the Christmas period. You want to increase okay. your cluster there. So seasonal patterns you a week before thanksgiving you bring up uh, uh 
twice as many notes uh, to receive. Um, and then after Christmas, after the New Year's Eve, uh, you scale them back down. Or, uh, and allows you also to ask all other sort of things like uh, um, online upgrades. So you don't need to go down to upgrade your software. You can do it online. Or you can move from one public cloud to another. Example, oh, nice. AWS, and you realize uh, they overcharge you or it's too expensive. Google has better prices. Azure has better prices. On site, you have better prices. What do you do? You don't want to shut down your application, bringing it down to uh, Google and bringing it back up. You slowly move across. You spin up nodes on Google, and then slowly you shut them down on AWS. And that's how you transfer your load. Everything while you are remaining online, serving transaction as you go. And the application side, you won't even care about it. This is going to be something that database operation will manage for you. So very, very okay. powerful features. So yes, totally in, goes in line cool. with the big data application and all that. Yeah, very I'll cool. also add that on Cockroach Cloud, it's it's as simple as a couple of clicks, right? Um, you want to self-service scale up your cluster because your your you know holiday season is around. You're anticipating an increase in traffic. You want to make sure you're safe. Just scale up your cluster, you know. Correct. Then it's so yeah. simple. Cockroach Cloud will make it as easy as clicking a few buttons. You don't really have to provision anything. It's really very simple. Nice. So the key value store, again, this monolithic key space, uh, uh, order lexicographically uh, is cut into chunks of data. We call them ranges, ranges, and then moved based on activity, but also on how you want to pin your data. So you have total discretion over how many ranges you want to have, and uh, that's called the replication factor. By default, it's three, but can be increased to five for production workloads, for example. And also where these ranges are located. So uh, ranges are also replicated, again, for resiliency. Uh, you, again, and this, having discretion over where you want to pin, uh, store your data, that's a great uh, uh, implication in that you can be compliant with the uh, uh, laws that impose where you need to store the data. Think about GDPR. So you can create a GDPR compliance application and you don't have to think about partitioning by yourself. It's going to be all done because you have discretion over how, where your ranges with your data are located. So you can add you can pin the data to some specific regions. You can uh, increase the replication factor so you can survive a multiple uh, a region failure, multiple region failures, node failures, and etc. Because you're always going to have uh, replicas of the ranges available to serve your data. Nice. So with that, uh, I want to go to uh, the beginning of your question. You asked me, how do we ensure that nodes don't conflict? So yeah. here, is, uh, basically, uh, the, the I think what I call the most important slide of the presentation that really um, encapsulates the essence of CockroachDB is the notion that of the replica of all the replicas available. In this case, uh, we have a three-node cluster uh, with a replication factor of three. So each rep, each rep, each range is replicated three times. Uh, only one at any point in time, only one of these replicas is deemed as the, the master. We call it the lease holder. And only the lease holder is able to serve your read and write request. So it doesn't matter if you reach node three at the very bottom here, and uh, you want to um, and you want to write the data inside of the G and Q, you won't be able to do it here, despite having a, the data available or reading the data. You always need to go to that node that, they, that has the lease holder for that particular range. That's how we ensure that only one range, uh, that only one range is uh, the go-to range. And that range uh, will be able to serve you only those reads. That's how we ensure consistency. For a write request, G, uh, this range, the node one, the list holder for range GQ, will ask a consensus through the Raft protocol for any write request. So as soon as you received the quorum right, then it will be able to confirm your commit of your data back to you. Again, this all works under the hood. You don't have to think about it where the ranges are located. You don't have to think about um, when, how on the application level, how to ensure consistency. This is all built out of the box in CockroachDB. So that's how we ensure that all your transactions are asset guaranteed. Okay, and we just can go uh, depth through it, yeah. 
please, Matt. And just to just to kind of um, you know, clarify what you were saying, uh, even though the data for you know G through Q is in Node One, you don't have to know where that data is. So connect yeah. to Node Three, you can connect to Node Two, you can connect to Node One. Uh, it's even simpler in Cockroach Cloud. We're going to give you a, a, a connection URL that's just to a regional load balancer. That load balancer is just going to connect to, to any of the nodes in your cluster. And because these nodes are managing um, all that kind of metadata where every every range is located, um, it all just happens. Nice. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So you, Rain, you see, as a developer, uh, you don't. From your point of view, it, it, the fact that CockroachDB under the hood is uses a cluster of nodes. Uh, that you know matter to you. Uh, it's good that you know how it's built under the hood. That's why we're giving the architecture overview. But as a developer, you will be giving your JDBC or ODBC URL to your uh, lo to the load balancer. And how, how many CockroachDB nodes there are in your cluster? That's going to be um, not important to you. You know that yeah. you don't need to be concerned about it. You just know that from your point of view, it's a single logical database it's implemented with a cluster of nodes but from a point of view it's just single logical database that's very important i don't want you to think that okay i have three nodes therefore i have three databases you have one mm -hmm. database spread yeah. across three nodes yeah nice this is how cockroach db offers the uh, resiliency and and whatnot out of the box this is is correct of the correct Mm -hmm. Correct. Because imagine, imagine node go up and node go, go down. Virtual machine do crash. Region yeah. regions do go down every now and then. AWS and Google they need to bring down the data centers for maintenance. So Never. how do we ensure survivability? Think about this example. Imagine that the node at the bottom, node three, goes down. Well, you still have out to two out of three node available so you still can reach your quorum so in this yeah. case rz is no longer going to be there so imagine node one is going to be the lease holder now for rz and is going to reach out to node two for quorum rights so you still have a, a availability in spite yeah. of node three going down you still be able to survive uh, yeah. nodes region going down the same principle applies as long as the majority of your nodes of your ranges are available, you'll be online. Nice. So to conclude, uh, I know this can a little bit, uh, you know, what does it relate to me as a developer? I don't need to know the, these, these details. Well, you don't need to know them. You don't need to know them now, maybe. But when it comes to uh, developing your application for performance, uh, for optimizing your queries, it's important you understand how it actually works under the hood. Yes, we are a relational database management system, but we use a key value engines at, as our storage engine. So it's important to understand that. And talking about it, how does it look? How does a relational table look like when, when it is parsed into a key store? So the KV store holds information about uh, the table name, which receives a unique identifier across all tables, so the index, the family, the primary key, and finally the values. And this is basically how every object is, look, is stored in our cluster. So a little bit quickly now about the transaction we talked about, uh, uh, we only support the serializable. So if you start your connection uh, to CockroachDB and you set uh, in your ORM or in your application, uh, uh, your isolation level to anything other than serializable, what matter? Serializable is the only level that we support. So we'll automatically upgrade your connection isolation level to serializable. It's the only level we support. And there is a reason for it because the serializable is the only level that really truly can guarantee acid transaction. So, uh, Fabio, before mm -hmm. I, I let you get too far into transactions, um, we got a great question from Evgeny Suslov um, yeah. uh, asking Is it not efficient just on one node? Which is a great question. I'm I'm assuming, perhaps, that he's referring to the architecture of having three nodes from before. So let me check the question again. Can you repeat it, please? Um, um, he, he literally was asking, is it not efficient just on one node? And I'm assuming that he's referring to the architecture from when we were talking about the three node architecture before. Well, I, I can, can, I can take, yeah, please. 
I can take this question. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, and, and we'll learn a lot more uh, later later in this presentation about the resiliency of cockroach TB. Um, but basically, it kind of ties into that question Rain had, right? What happens when a node goes down? Right. Um, you know, how do you know which node? How, how do the nodes not know to fight with each other? And uh, it's for that reason we use uh, a quorum of replicas, uh, three to start. That way, if one goes, they'll have a majority, two left. And uh, those two can just elect a new leaseholder and continue processing the data. And on top of that, um, because we're a distributed database, using more nodes allows us to have more uh, compute, right? Yeah. Not only just the node you're connected to needs to do all that data processing, we can spread the load across all of the nodes and just return all that information to the client um, through the node you can do. Yeah. Awesome. So now that we discuss, uh, so we finished the first part about architecture under the hood a little bit. So now we're going to go through the example of a, a transaction. So you as a developer, you will be very interested in knowing how exactly you need to handle transaction because with a serializable uh, isolation level, you can run into conflicts. Because we are running on an optimistic style of locking, you go through the operation, you're ready to commit, and then you run into a violation. There are three cases here. I, I, I put them in the slide. Uh, so first to say that uh, for such a conflict, you need to think about the retry strategy. And uh, I want to introduce the terms here, what we call to an explicit transaction, which is a one that starts explicitly with a begin statement. And that puts the onus of retrying the transaction to the application. And then there is a notion of an implicit transaction where you send a, uh, basically a single statement or your statement as a as, together as a batch to CockroachDB. And for this type of transaction, like a single statement type of transaction, CockroachDB will retry this on your behalf. So we highly encourage uh, uh, developers to send over an implicit transaction. So here is an example of an implicit versus an explicit transaction. So an explicit transaction is a multiple statement. Typically, uh, the application must retry, and we're going to go through the next slide how to do that. For implicit transaction, is a single statement or batches of single statements, uh, and CockroachDB can reply on your behalf should it run into, uh, um, into, uh, into a transaction conflict. So in case you your logic dictates that you cannot, and that is the case that happens, that you cannot... Uh, break down your application to only send an in implicit transaction, how do you handle serializable retry error? So the first thing you got to do, step one of three, imagine that you have this uh, code, the transfer funds. This is the classical example of transferring money from one account to the other. Obviously, you want to do this operation in an acid manner. How do you do that with CockroachDB? So you have this, uh, this is what we call the transaction logic function. The, the second step is uh, introducing what we call a wrapper, a wrapper around uh, for uh, handling conflict resolution. It's a wrapper to run the transaction logic. What this is, and this is just an example in Python, and we have them for all other languages, uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a function that takes uh, your function, your logic, your, uh, your application logic function, and then uh, catches any of such error, uh, the serializable failure error, and then retries it on your behalf. Again, you don't need to code it. That's, we already have documentation for ORMs, for uh, your uh, favorite uh, library to use in any language that built for you. And there's all example of how to create a, such a crude application uh, on our documentation. In fact, I'm going to share a slide after this. And the third step is uh, to wrap uh, to, to use this wrapper application and insert uh, your logic application inside of uh, this wrapper application. That's how you would code. This is not just good practice for CockroachDB, by the way. I think uh, a, for any database, the way you need to handle transaction retries error, it's good to use uh, this uh, technique uh, of wrapping your transaction logic function inside of uh, uh, um, uh, error, uh, uh, transserializable error handling function. And again, as promised, in our documentation, this is just a screenshot. We will share a depth in our comments, uh, uh, the details of our documentation, where to find this. But you can find a great example across multiple packages. This is an example for Python. But you have multiple languages and multiple packages 
how to build such an application. You will find exactly the same code that I shared with you in our docs. And again, you would, you would have to build all this by yourself, but it really, it's done for you. You're saving you like 40% of the stuff you have to do. That's, that's nice. really a great, great example. Yes, do check our documentation. Chances are you're struggling for hours coding something. What you need is it's on our documentation. It's yeah. in our documentation. We have a search function. I use it all the time. On the top left, uh, search the key term. It comes up really like Google. Very great. Great, nice. great, great resource. Fabio, I, I have another question from mm -hmm. the audience from Sanjay uh, Giriala. Um, and that is, uh, will more nodes increase the commit time for write operations? It's a, such a no. great question. It's such a great question. Um, and, and I can answer this one. Uh, the answer is no. Um, and, and, it's, and, and it's part of the reason why we're giving this architecture presentation. Because um, you need to kind of understand these things uh, when you're interacting with CockroachDB. What will dictate the write commit time is how many replicas you have. So for the same reason that we had those three nodes and every time we're talking to the leaseholder and we need a majority of replicas to have the most consistent state of the data before we consider it committed, we'll also uh, make sure that at least the majority will have, have, have written that data um, in the commit time. So for example, out of the box, we have replication factor of three then we need at least two nodes to acknowledge. So that'll be its holder and then one other one to acknowledge the right. If we have a five node cluster and we set our replication factor to five, then we'll need at least three nodes to acknowledge that. And that extra node, uh, depending on where it is geographically, can add some time, right? So it's a basically a network hop. Um, think of a multi-region cluster. If you have uh, nine nodes in your cluster and it's between three different regions um, and you have a five X replication factor, the first three nodes to acknowledge the right at that point, it will be uh, the first three replicas to acknowledge the right at that point, the data will be committed. That's awesome. Thanks for that awesome question, yeah. Sanjay. I keep, I keep, it's cool. Then let me go to you, the... Fabio, you're doing great. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I'm realizing I'm running late. So I'm going to conclude oh, quickly good. with the resiliency uh, aspect. I know there is a lot of questions coming up in every one of my architecture overview uh, with my customers. So I understand it. By the way, tomorrow we have office hours. I remind it again. Please join tomorrow's call. We're going to ask all sorts of questions. It's going to be open panel. But concluding quickly, our resiliency model, imagine. So again, we are... I'll, so Cockroach we will present to you as a single logical database. It's not a database here. It's a single logical database and your cluster connected to any of those nodes in your cluster. You want to expand it, you just add more nodes. Should one of these regions fail, the node connected to that region will be simply be redirected. And that's something that the, the load balancer will do on your behalf or a system will do on your behalf to the other to the other nodes that will be able to continue serving your your uh, your read and write request. So the application does not stop because some of the nodes inside of your cluster fail. And once they're back up, you're back to, uh, you know, you're up and running or you provision some new nodes or you want to scale up or you want to scale down, we scale accordingly. So this is the very powerful feature. That's what the name CockroachDB is all about. You can kill a node, you can kill a region, you can kill multiple regions. You won't be able to kill the cluster. And with that, uh, uh, Matt, I'll pass it to you uh, for uh, the uh, really how to get started with CockroachDB. Now, I think hopefully I got you excited. I'll do a get yes. start. Yes, yes, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Fabio. Um, lots of great questions. Again, if you're interested in um, Fabio doing a deeper dive, he this module that he typically does in architecture is a uh, two hour long module, yes, which we are happy to do if there's interest. Go ahead and comment below and let us know if you're keen and we will make it happen just for you. Um, now I'm gonna turn it over to Matt and I'm going to put on my student hat and, uh, and be the student of the lab. We are, let me, uh, do I have a link to this lab up? I totally don't. It's a can, really long link. Yeah, and, and we'll share the lab uh, with everyone. And well. and it will be below. I'm going to put it on screen. 
Um, it's in our GitHub repo, um, which is Cockroach Labs slash developer success. We are playing with the Getting Started Lab today. And I am now going to be the student. Matt, take it away. You got it. Thanks so I'm much, Fabio. I'm going to turn my chair so I can see a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Um, the resolution's a little off. Oh, it's terrible. Let me try and yeah. While we you know while we get that sorted, I'll just talk about the program. Um, so Fabio went over um, the architecture. Uh, I would consider it briefly because there's a lot to talk about. Um, but you don't need to know all that stuff to just get started. Um, oh, it is super is simple. Really... We've got about few minutes left in this stream. Um, if you feel like tagging along and doing the lab with us at the same time, you're more than welcome to. But this link will always be available. Feel free to come to office hours tomorrow if you get stuck. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to set up a Cockroach Cloud free tier cluster. Um, and it's so quick. Um, whenever our student's ready, we'll just jump right in. <laughs> Your student is having technical difficulties. We literally, in rehearsal yesterday, this monitor was fine. So monitor, you and I are going to have a talk. Just saying. I'm switching over to a different monitor really quick. So I'll talk about, I guess, uh, the OU and, and some of the lab prereqs before we get started. Um, so we talked about CockroachDB, it's a distributed SQL database, all these amazing features out of the box. We talked about Cockroach Cloud, which is our database as a service. It's a fully managed instance of CockroachDB uh, that we manage for you. Um, and then there's Cockroach Cloud, uh, free tier, where we, uh, you know, it's, it's free forever. Um, it's an easy way to get started with, with CockroachDB. You also access it through Cockroach Cloud. And uh, we're going to go through that today. Uh, some of the prereqs we have, um, you're going to need a modern web browser. So Chrome, Firefox, Safari should be sufficient. And a terminal or a PowerShell. Um, if you don't have that stuff, there's some information in the lab on getting started with that. Um, but otherwise, there's some you know, pretty basic tools. and uh, promise getting started is super easy. It's easier than uh, setting up a new monitor. <laughs> yep. Why don't you talk to us about how, what the first few steps are, because I am already signed up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am going yeah. to take myself out while I very quickly switch over to yeah, no, no an problem. even different monitor. Dan, this we have fine. unlimited monitors. Uh, <laughs> Dan asks such a great question here. Uh, am I going to race a bowl of ramen? Um, what does that mean? Sounds so random. Um, but basically, we have a video up on our YouTube channel where uh, setting up a free tester on Cockroach Cloud is faster than preparing a uh, instant ramen pack. Um, and, and I feel like we're, it's only right to share it in the chat or in the description of the YouTube video. Um, but it's, it's really that quick. Um, so to sign up, you'll go to cockroachlabs.cloud. And I feel like we could kind of put that up there on the screen. Um, and you can sign up with an email address and a password, like your standard sign up uh, process. And you'll just have to kind of uh, authenticate uh, your email. Or you could uh, sign up with Cockroach TV, or sorry, sign up with GitHub, um, which is even easier. If you have a GitHub account, just click sign up and uh, you'll be logged in. So we got a question from uh, uh, the audience. How safe is your data with CockroachDB? I think I assume it refers to Cockroach Cloud. Uh, so what are our measures here to save the data, Matt? Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic question. Um, something I don't know off the top of my head because there is a lot of information. Um, but you can think of uh, we manage a fleet of clusters. And uh, we've got a fantastic page on our documentation that explains exactly how safe your data is with CockroachDB. Um, what that means and uh, all the good stuff. Yeah, we just reach also SOC 2 type 2 compliance. So that's very important uh, uh, for uh, fin financial services customers. We can discuss a bit more. Maybe we should share a little bit more about it. Yeah, no, that's a, that's fantastic. And, and perhaps there's there's even room for, for us to talk about it tomorrow in our office hours, or maybe even we can uh, another live stream on, on, on you know, the guarantees we provide. Um, Definitely, that's a great question. Let's uh, let's jump right in. Um, so this is that sign up page I was talking about. Uh, Rain will be our student today, and so uh, Rain already has an account. So I think I'll click login with GitHub, and we'll just be in there. But feel free to sign up with email and password. 
uh, I hope you're uh, tagging along because I promise it's so fast. Um, yeah. And uh, on the so, left there on the screen, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, I was just going to say the same thing, but you go ahead, Matt. Yeah, so on the left there, um, you know, instead of following my screen, I'll follow your screen. Um, so yeah, we'll have screenshots on the left and the browser on the right is the actual uh, website we're going to interact with. Um, so after we sign up there, um, you'll want to click uh, Create Cluster. And we'll stick with Cockroach Cloud Free. It's free forever. Um, up to one of these CPU, you get five gigs of storage forever. Um, and I think if you scroll up, it actually says encrypted. That's right. So you get encrypt encryption uh, in flight and at rest. So that's a question somebody had. Um, and it's a great distinction to put right now. So if you use our self-hosted version of the product, you require an enterprise license for those enterprise features. But uh, using Cockroach Cloud, everything is uh, enterprise enabled. So your enterprise uh, license is just enabled and it's there forever, including on Cockroach Cloud Free. Cool. Yeah. So uh, leaving these we'll at also... default. Yeah, yeah, you'll click your cloud provider. You're more than welcome to choose uh, GCP or AWS and your regions right now for free tier. We offer three regions um, that uh, I think if you click it, you'll see them. Yeah, so we have uh, Iowa and then we have Europe and also in Asia. Awesome. Yeah, but feel free to pick any of those. We can stick with Iowa, and you can click your uh, select your cluster name and click get started. Uh, it's it's that fast, um, faster than I can talk. Apparently, um, <laughs> it says uh, twenty to thirty seconds, sometimes quicker, um, and it's super quick. If you want to follow along on the lab on the left, you'll see all of these steps with screenshots, uh, easy little uh, ways to copy and paste all this information, and an explanation of every single step, every every little box you're going to click on. All right. Kitten has been created. That's so happy. Yeah. So this is literally the same thing I have over here. Yeah. And just want to say we, we've been going at this for maybe five minutes or five minutes for me talking. And, and already I just want to recap, right? We learned about Cockroach TV. We learned about Cockroach Cloud. We learned about Cockroach Cloud free tier um, and, and how easy this started. Um, your cluster is already created. Um, and, and, and now we're just going to get started with the connection. So it's, it's really... Uh, self-explanatory, but I'll kind of talk over as we kind of copy the three different steps. Um, again, the lab has an explanation for everything. So right there, we're connecting to, sorry, we're downloading the Cockroach TV binary, and this is that terminal, so Rain has opened the terminal for us. And we're gonna use this curl command that we're just gonna download uh, the Cockroach TV client, which we're gonna use to, to our cluster. So that's step one. Uh, step two, we're already on it is to uh, download our certificates. It's, it'll download them in a kind of predetermined directory um, that the connection URL will just know it's there. And that's that command. And we have <laughs> one step left where we're gonna combine step one and two. Um, and so we downloaded our, our binary. Password. Yep. Automatically. We downloaded our binary. We uh, got our certificates and now we're gonna connect using our client and the certificates and hit enter. There it is. I hope he at least started to prepare some ramen. Uh, but yeah, it was that, it was that quick. Um, we're connected. Uh, you can see free tier GCP US central. That's the region we're in and cockroach labs cloud is where we're hosting it. Two, six, two, five, seven is the, uh, default SQL port we use for cockroach GB. Default DB is the name of the database. So Ooh, I can even see do? my client and the server version. This that's is right. Awesome. This yeah. is the port we're on. Oh, look, and there's the Postgres wire. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, and at this point, and, you know, start using that familiar SQL that we all, you know, we talked about distributed KV, but, but the best part about it is we speak SQL or Postgres compatible and you can import your data. You can restore it from a different cluster. Um, you can put a CSV in there. You can just start writing some, some insert statements. Feel free to get started your data will persist, you know, set up a, a, a little application, point it to a free tier cluster and just have fun. Cool. Very cool. And that is all here. It even has the exact screenshot, not the exact screenshot, of course, it has the screenshot of what we just saw. That right. is awesome. And, and Rain, right, if I may add here, when uh, in the future in future workshops next week, we're going to get started and get our hands a bit too dirty and uh, discuss uh, uh, some topics. So we need you to be on the common line. We need you to be also be able to create a cluster, have a clear cluster rate. You know, it costs nothing. And uh, we're going to go through some exercises to prove some points about good optimization. We discuss about CDC. We discuss about JSON. We discuss about uh, serializable transaction. We discuss about backups. Uh, and uh, that's all the important points. So yeah, yeah. subscribe.
a, a great I, I question, love this question. From Dan. Yeah. Um, did you actually make the ball of ramen? Uh, well, I mean, my camera's on, so I didn't make the ramen, but stay, stay tuned. Maybe tomorrow I'll do it on office hours. Okay. And, and we oh, actually, uh, a more serious question. Formula Gold would like to know how safe is your data with CockroachDB? Yeah, so uh, it's something we covered, but basically on Cockroach Cloud, your data is encrypted uh, at flight, uh, in flight and at rest. Um, so, so the idea is um, it's all good to go. And we have a fantastic page on our, on our documentation that talks about what are the guarantees we provide. And why don't I get that? Awesome, thank you. So that is today's workshop is a module about a high level overview of the architecture as well as getting started um, as you can see it was as fast as cooking a bowl of ramen um, <laughs> next uh, we are doing office hours tomorrow same time same channel uh, 12 o'clock Eastern time, in case you're just now joining us, uh, is when we normally start an hour ago. On Wednesdays will be modules, and some of the uh, upcoming modules that we're going to do is query optimization, uh, Node.js, uh, REST, uh, JSON options, uh, import backup restore. I'm super excited. Um, if you're interested in deep diving, with this higher overview of architecture, uh, please let us know and we can make that happen as well. Um, see you tomorrow at the office hours where it's basically an AMA with our same, uh, not our same experts as today at all. Uh, tomorrow we will be talking with Brahm and Ferris and Alistair. I'm super excited and I am completely not distracted by our producer's daughter on screen um, at yes. all, not distracted <laughs> at all. Um, <laughs> so again, this, this show is about uh, making, yeah, helping developers get better at the job. What resources are you missing? How can we help you? Um, what problems are you tackling? What's your latest project? What are you making? These are the things we wanna know. And hopefully today you are able to understand how to play with CockroachDB and get started and sign up. Mm -hmm. Special thanks to Matt and Fabio and our producer, Dan Kelly, and of course his daughter. And I will see you tomorrow at this same channel at 12 o'clock Eastern time. Bye everybody. Thank you.